If you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to the Shanka Show. Today I would like to finish and wrap it up the topic about things that Soviet people used to collect. And uh, there were a question about uh, toy trains. Uh, and I don't think people actually collected those. Some people had uh, model trains, little toy trains. Since most apartments were pretty small in size, you couldn't really have a big collection, have it all set up. So some people had the model trains, and I believe they mostly were coming from Eastern Germany, from DDR. But I'm not sure if it was a popular a hobby to collect uh, model trains. Another thing I forgot to mention that some people, some kids uh, were collecting toy soldiers. So we also had, uh, just like American kids or kids in other countries, uh, little toy figures of different soldiers. So uh, some kids had collections of those. And then, of course, you can play exchange, trade, and stuff like that. So that was other thing uh, popular with kids. Uh, some adults collected uh, tickets. Since we had a developed system of public transportation, for example, in Kiev we had um, subway, but subway we had no tickets. It was just a turnstile kind of things. You drop a coin, five kopecks, you go through. But we had bus, which had a, its own kind of a ticket, uh, five kopecks. We had a tramway, uh, I believe there was a four copex train, and then we had also a trolley bus. So all those um, uh, types of transportation had their own per uh, ticket. So people collected those. And we also in Kiev, we had so-called funicular. So that's the train that goes up and down the hill. Uh, we had one steep hill in Kiev here on the banks of uh, River Dnieper, and they sold uh, tickets as well. So. Uh, bus and tram tickets were another item some people collected. One of my uh, viewers of my Russian channel, uh, he mentioned that when he was a kid, around 10, 11, they used to do dumpster diving uh, by the hotel where the uh, foreign tourists are stayed. So that's kind of interesting. Like the actual term dumpster diving, I learned in America. But he said that's what they used to do. And what they were going after is empty uh, beer cans and pop cans, you know, that were thrown away from the hard currency bars as well, uh, looking for empty uh, cigarette packs, everything, looking for everything foreign, of course, from the uh, tourists that came from other countries. So beer cans, pop cans, any bottles with all, that had the labels from alcohol, you know, drinks, uh, and of course, chewing gum wrappers, because those were also very popular. And speaking of chewing gum wrappers, I can tell you a couple more stories on that topic. As several people mentioned that we actually made a mistake and we showed uh, some chewing gum wrappers that were popular in the end of 80s, beginning of 90s, and most of them were coming from Turkey. Prior to that, during this early 80s, uh, we had chewing gum made, I believe, in one of the Baltic states. The uh, factory was called Kalev. And they had strawberry flavor chewing gum, orange flavor chewing gum, and coffee uh, flavor chewing gum. Maybe some others. But I think they also had mint. Of course, gotta have mint. Uh, but the flavor didn't last long. But we still used those wrappers to play games. So those were what the most... Uh, available wrappers for chewing gum to collect were from the Kalev. And as I mentioned earlier, of course, if you had something from Wrigley's, you know, double mint, as we call it, uh, double arrow or peppermint, all those were really popular and um, hard to get. And I have a story I just remembered I wanted to share with you guys. So when I was, I think, maybe fourth or fifth grade, so we're talking 1982-83, one of the kids in school had this super unusual uh, wrapper of the chewing gum, and I believe it was called Atomic Bomb. And that was so cool because we no one saw that before or ever after. So he had this unique, one-of-the-kind wrapper for the chewing gum. And, of course, he didn't want to trade. He didn't want to play. He just was bringing it to show it. And one time when we were in gym, so, you know, 
we had a room changing room so kids will change and then we go play basketball or run outside stuff like that someone uh, snuck back in that room and stole that wrapper and i think that was a huge thing i mean there was like somebody stole a thousand dollars that kid was so upset and was crying and only many years later i found out who actually did it because we couldn't figure out who did it uh, but yeah uh, that was this big tragedy big event that the atomic bomb wrapper got stolen from one of the kids now to give you an idea how i don't say desperate soviet people were for the foreign goods even like for the foreign chewing gum uh, there was a tragic event that happened in March of 1975 in Sokolniki. Um, so what was going on, there was a hockey game between uh, youth teams of Canada and Soviet Union. And after the game was over, the Canadian team was um, heading out. And that was maybe some kind of advertising trick or whatsoever but the Canadians had uh, packs of the Wrigley's chewing gum, and they just started uh, throwing it into the crowds, in the Soviet uh, crowd, and they just didn't realize how, you know, people wanted to get those. So the, the whole area just became a total mess. People are pushing each other, running to each other, fighting with each other, try, trying to snatch the chewing gum. So the management of the stadium, they panicked because they were afraid that foreign journalists and foreign tourists were part of this, you know, also were watching the game, who started taking these pictures and that will be, you know, big fiasco, PR fiasco for Soviet Union, you know, uh, showing the Soviet people killing each other, uh, collecting chewing gum. So they shut off the lights in, uh, in the building and in this darkness, people were still struggling. In the end, 21 people died. So they got scorched or they tripped and hit their head. But there was this uh, huge event. Actually, 21 person uh, died in that mass uh, collecting chewing gum. And they right now have a placard there on the door. It was a secret for many years, of course. It never was in a, t a news like about it. it. never came up on TV or newspaper. But 21 people, Soviet people, died trying to grab a piece of um, American chewing gum. Hey, so now I'll show you how we played with the chewing gum wrappers. I actually purchased Wrigley's Double Mint, but unfortunately they changed the package. So when I opened this box, that's all I got is instead of a normal, this style wrapper like they used to do, this is just kind of like boring and faceless, so I had to jerry-rig and check this out. So one of these boxes I made, this is pretty much how the wrapper looked, you know, it'll be nicely uh, folded. And when you start the game, the first thing you do, you drop it and you spin. So each kid drops the, uh, this way their wrapper, my went face down. So the other guys will go face up, he will have a first turn, try to uh, flip the wrapper and this way you win it. So if I approach, you know, there's my turn for example, I'm trying to cap my hand like this and what you do, you hit and kind of create like a vacuum or impact with air and you try to flip this paper on the other side like this you see it's heavy because it's a more like a cardboard not as light as the paper wrapper but this is how you do <clears throat> so if i flipped it and the other guy didn't flip mine he failed and i keep his wrapper so this is how i played uh the game of the uh gum wrappers and i said this is so called we call it it's called double main but we call it double arrow because it has arrow pointing both ways and actually, I just found out that it was illegal even to ship uh, uh, chewing gum to Soviet Union in 70s. I'm not sure why, maybe just the Western culture influence, but uh, there's actually a document. Uh, so if you have a friend in America, for example, he will send you some chewing gum because you so want to try some. Uh, it will be confiscated by the customs on the border. So there's actually this paper that they'll put in your parcel says uh, your chewing gum uh, was confiscated because it's illegal to um, send by mail uh, American chewing gum. 
Well, so this is my uh, final video about uh, hobbies in Soviet Union. I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.